Hello, 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 hello. Okay, guys. There's a topic we never really want to talk about. You know, there's another one, which is very common. I'm not going to talk about the fact that verbal abuse is normalized in some parts of the world for the women. And um, let me just go straight to sexual uh, deprivation or what you would call sex, sex starvation. So in every union, there's always an agreement. It looks like there's an... Some people discuss theirs before they start. Oh, I want to do 20 rounds, 50 rounds, 700 rounds. <laughs> um, I even watched a uh, one of those judge, not, not Judge Judy, the other divorced judge, um, where the woman was complaining that, no, the guy was complaining that the woman was a nymphomaniac. She wanted a lot of sex. And the judge was like, what kind of human being are you? People are looking for this. So sexual deprivation is something that we have done, we've normalized in the church, mostly the church because it's usually a church community. Um, we think that it's normal. And then we blame the other party when they go out to cheat on us. Before I start, let me get something clear. I've never cheated on anybody in my life. I'm almost 40 years old. It's actually been the other way around. People have cheated on me. <laughs> So I, it's not it's not like my problem. It's not like a fault that I have, but I'm going to say this the way I can say clearly and without bias. Sexual deprivation can be done both by the man or by the woman or if you're... or by your other partner if you're both same sex, you know what I mean? Or if you're intersex, you're both intersex. It can be done by both people. Um, there are articles by psychologists who have who have um, um, interviewed a lot of people that show that, yes, there's usually one of the spouses, one person is always, always has low libido, a like low sex drive. I get it. It could be as a result of so many things. It could be as a result of um, past trauma. It could be as a result of um, disconnection and everything. Because I've had uh, cases in my life where um, I heard things like, you don't know I'm a woman. You should... You know, women need to be chased. <laughs> the last time I was used to me, I was like, yo, yo, slow down, slow down. Apparently, it was because she was distracted by other men. And she tried to manipulate me to believe that it was my fault. Guess what? Eventually, it was, I'm not, I was not the one saying, uh, no, I don't want to. Because it was all... Now, there's a wrong, wrong, wrong concept and perception out there. The world told us that men love sex, men can't do without sex, men are dogs, men are this. But early in life, I was exposed to this doctor when I had a surgery, and she told me, Benedica, don't let them lie to you. Women love sex more than men. And then I started researching, she said something, she said that when a woman sees a man, she kind of scans and visualizes what sex is going to look like with the guy. By just looking at the man, no, just looking at the guy, I was like, oh crap. So I now said, so why do you now say a man is a perv when he now makes sexual advances to you the first day? She said, maybe because, so we came, after a lot of research and whatever, I came to this conclusion that people who say that to you when you make sexual advances to them, whether it's a guy making advance to the girl, or the girl making advance to the guy, are not into you. They don't like you. They're not attracted to you. Um, so they look for a way to spin it against you. There's this thing that happens on sitcoms. It's been normalized even in Madea's, uh, all those uh, black American sitcom where um, the women will be laughing and saying, oh, I, 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 I didn't give him no sex. I had a problem of sex. And then, um, and I also went to the bathroom. He got there and I took away the, the, the lotion. So you deprive him of having sex with you and also deprive him of self-care <laughs> in the bathroom. If that is not malicious, what else is? And then when that same person is pushed to the extreme to go cheat on you, he's a dog? Heck no! Mm -mm. Now let's call it what it is. Um, it used to be the narrative. Oh, he cheated on me. No matter how, you should not cheat on anybody. No matter how they deprive you of sex. Wait until you're the one who's being deprived. Because like I said, I've had people cheat on me. 
I was raised, I was a church boy all my life, good boy. I was the guy that would say, no sex in a relationship. And then when we start, you think it's a joke and there's no sex. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I saw, right? Um, so we should start having these conversations. It is not fair on your partner for you to deprive them of sex. There's an article I read two years ago. It was the sex starved marriage. Two things happen to you if you're being sex starved in a relationship. Now, deprivation or starvation is when it is supposed to be yours, which means there's an agreement between you that you're a couple and you can um, consummate your whatever it is you call it, love, marriage, with sexual intercourse or sexual relationship, whether as monogamous, non-monogamous, ethical, non-monogamous, polyamorous, whatever it is you want to call it. You've agreed upon that, that is what you're going to do. Now, it's not fair if you're going to fail on your own part of the agreement not to provide an alternative for the person you're with. How is it fair to say, and you should understand I'm not in the mood. You're not in the mood on Monday. You're not in the mood on Tuesday. You're not in the mood on Wednesday. It's one week you're not in the mood. Two weeks. In my case, it was four months. <laughs> I haven't heard people who have been married and for a year they've not had sex. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. What are you guys doing? And yeah, sometimes the man is not in the mood because me, I also learned how to behave the same way. Oh, don't touch me. Oh, just leave me alone. And because it begins to irritate you if the person you've been going after for a while keeps saying no. And all of a sudden, when she or he wants it is when they come to you. For someone like me who is, I'm very um, passionate. I'm, I can only be involved with people sexually when I am emotionally attached to them. So I can't even do random, randy stuff. It's not, it's not me. So when that's the case, I begin to feel like I'm being used. And then I shut down. So you say, oh, but he's a man. He would always want sex. No, men will not always want sex. So I get the fact that sometimes men are annoying. And as a woman, you just don't want to have sex with him and blah, blah, blah. But you, you have to have a deadline. Because if you keep doing that, you push him to the extreme. Am I making excuses for people who cheat? No. And yes. There are people who, no matter what you do, like, um, how did, uh, oh, like when we heard about Beyonce and Jay-Z. How can Beyonce, how can Jay-Z cheat on Beyonce? We don't know whether the girl was stabbing him, so let's not even say anything. Because when it's a guy who deprives a girl of sex and says things to her and she goes to cheat on him, we say the guy is a monster. I had a girlfriend once who told me, I'm not joking, Onyedika, if you cheat on me, I'll blame you. If I cheat on you, I'll blame you. Wait, if you, if I cheat on you, you blame me. If you cheat on me, you blame me. <laughs> but that is the reality of the society we live in, which is not healthy, it's toxic. We have to learn to change all these patterns and, and learn, unlearn, we learn the right thing. And we have to be very intentional. It's not, oh, let's pray to the Holy Ghost to, to liberate us, to help us. If you are in a committed relationship with somebody, you have an agreement, and you're supposed to be involved sexually, and you cannot do that, it's not like it's a duty because sex is supposed to be enjoyed by both parties, right? Then you just have to do it in a way. It's not every time the guy is in the mood men they say and there's this wrong to say men are always in the mood to have sex who comes up with all this nonsense though oh men are always in the mood to have sex yo maybe you did not count people like me because I'm not always in the mood to have sex um doesn't mean I, I wouldn't want to things have to be right so that's why you have to deal with your issues before you fall asleep make sure you handle everything that is bothering you before the end of the day because if it passes that day it increases to the next day to the next day and then it becomes irredeemable and sexual attraction is like mental attraction it's not something that comes easily it once it's gone it's gone um so some people do that some people avoid um se sexual um relationship with their spouses because they don't enjoy it uh, he's not doing it right or she's not doing it the right way. That is where you have to learn to be transparent. Hmm? 
hey babe um but don't do it when it's happening because some people pick it wrongly hey babe um you know can i tell you a little bit about this find a way just be patient don't say it to be right say it with empathy saying hey i know this is not can we you know can you just say can we try something new today or something but not to say things that will shut the person down and then you expect that the person should automatically be reactivated or reanimated like okay after a year man nah, just charge it the charge it the let us go it doesn't work like that sexual deprivation is a form of mental abuse and it's actually also a form of sexual abuse i didn't know until i was told by um professionals about it i was like whoa and that was after i read it first didn't believe it then i was told i was like okay this is a big deal but it's something we don't talk about but it's something we also practice we normalize oh i just give birth to children so i don't want to meanwhile i know that it's when people are pregnant that they also want to have sex a lot so so it depends let's stop making excuses and generalizing this is who women are this is who men are everybody is different there are nymphomaniacs that most of the women I've met in my life loved sex more than I did. I'm not saying I've had a lot of partners, but I'm just saying um, because, like I said, I was always saying no sex in relationships, but they wanted sex and it was a problem. The thing is, you have to find a way to communicate well. Do not use it as a means of control, which is what our ancestors or mothers did. Ah, you not touch me after I begged you for money for chicken, you not give me. And uh, then when I was younger, um, some one of the bishop's wife said that if you have to have sex with your husband or partner, she said husband, before he, only after he has given you money, she said, what's the difference between you and a sex worker? Because you have to get paid to have sex. It should be enjoyed. Yo. If you don't enjoy it talk to your spouse go for therapy because it could be vaginismus it could be um, something from your past it could be something you can deal with it together and I know it's not common amongst Christians if you can't give her or him the satisfaction they need you can invite a third person I know Christians are gonna hate this that's why even, I don't even see, there's no, there's no problem with, do you know there's no problem with polygamy, even in the Bible? It's only if you're going to be a deacon, right? So this whole monogamy, trust me, I'm monogamous, don't, don't get me wrong. But monogamy is um, not the right way because the Bible does not even criticize polygamy. Your so-called father of faith was polygamous. All of them, check all of them were polygamous. Um... And of course, polyandry is also something that's very common in, in like river state. And then there's polyandry. Point being, if you cannot provide what your spouse needs, and your spouse needs it, like he needs it. I know you say if you don't have sex, you're not gonna die. Um, before we used to let the pace of sexuality be determined by the person who doesn't have much the, the the higher sex drive, but that's also not fair because it looks like. You are in control of what's going to happen. Why does it have to be based on what you feel alone? How about what your spouse feels? Because when people say, if you love me, do this. How about, because I love you, let me do this. Let's be realistic. Hey, if you love me, you will, mm -mm. okay, how about, because I love you, I'm going to do this for you. So we are busy pointing to people what we want them to do when we're not trying to do what we could do for the person so this is where i'm going to stop about sexual deprivation it's a form of mental abuse and a form of sexual abuse and um if it's something you do find a way to stop it because it but are wicked nah nee, but are wicked <laughs> it but are wicked because you know when you discuss it you know how you feel when you discuss it with your friends you say it in a way that it's like yeah i didn't give him sex yes yes some people are genuinely tired when they get back from work and everything Find the routine, find a pattern, change it. Because you see money and sex. If you don't have those things in a relationship, forget it. Forget your gist in 400 years. You become roommates. You become partners, roommates. And then your spouse starts to, like there was this girl I dated one, uh, and then she starts going out to play squash every time with this particular guy. And you 
couldn't do anything about it. And of course, if they keep doing that, the attraction is there, then boom, they cheat on you and you're like, oh, they cheated on me. They did not cheat on you. You push them away to go have sexual relations somewhere else. So find a way to fix it. Find a way to stop depriving, depriving your spouse of sexual, um, is it koinonia? You guys call it. <laughs> All right, I got to go. Bye.